Hello, I am John Benderwaffle Zaljets, and today we are delving deep and exploring the depths of the darkest dungeons. Today we're going to be looking at two different methods for creating dungeons for our game within RPG Maker. We will first be creating one from scratch using the basic map creation tools. Then we will be using the built-in dungeon generator tool to randomly generate a dungeon for us that we will then edit to make playable. Let's move on over to my computer and take a look. Okay guys, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a dungeon for this little like temple looking thing here. Um, that's because if you look, the player starts here, they go up to the castle, and they come along here, and potentially, if they're just exploring, they'll find that this is going to be the first dungeon that they're going to encounter. Pretty likely to be the first dungeon that they're going to encounter. So that's the one that we're going to work on today. And it's going to be a very, sort of, user-friendly dungeon experience. So, uh, yeah. Let's get right to it. So, world map, right-click, new. And we're going to call it something, I'm just going to call it Snow Temple, set the tile set to Dungeon, and let's set the width and height, 50 and 50. That gives us some room to play around. Now, we are going to do these dungeons in much the same way, like style-wise, that we did the interiors for the um, buildings and towns. At least this first one that we're doing by hand we're going to so that it can fit stylistically. If you didn't do buildings in that style where the sort of like Pokemon-esque where you have like half buildings, you don't have all the walls shown, um, then do it the other way. Um, the generate dungeon will automatically do it that way. So you'll be set if you did that style. Um, basically all you're doing with the dungeon is you're making a big, um, it's just a big fancy looking interior room. Um, that being said, designing dungeons is super important because this is where the majority of your gameplay is probably going to go. Like your actual gameplay, not necessarily like the time that the player is going to be spending because they might be out on the field or doing like story related stuff and they aren't necessarily going to be in the dungeon. But the bulk of your gameplay is here in the dungeons. So let's get going. We're going to use this auto tile here for the look. So let's get to the drawing. One, two, three, four, five. First tile. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're just going to um, do a pretty basic entryway to start with. That's our wall. We're going to use this tile for the floor. You guys can do different things. If you don't want to use these tiles, that's fine. These are just the ones that I prefer. So you come in this way. There's our little entrance corridor. Actually, let's move that down a few tiles. There you go. So that gives us more of like an entry grand hallway. Make sure that you guys drop down your shadow along the wall. Gives it that three-dimensional feel. So now let's go ahead and let's keep sort of drawing this out. We're going to put a tunnel off this way. The player is going to be able to go up a little bit, and there's going to be another wall. Now, when you have situations like this, draw out your wall. Now, this presents us with a problem. I wonder if you can spot the problem already. These tiles here are touching diagonally. While that doesn't, like, affect anything, it's, at least to me, a little bit sloppy to do it that way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and we're going to move it down one. So that way we have that one space of black right there and it just looks a little bit cleaner. Now let's extend this up and then we're going to put... Why are those three tall? Hmm. Okay, let's fix this, guys. Sorry about that. 
in my haste, I was a little inaccurate. That's fine. Everyone makes mistakes. They're not mistakes. They're happy little accidents. Right, Bob Ross? So, there we go. We've got a nice little, like, U-shape going on. Maybe we want to extend this out. So that's cool looking. And now that is going to have another sort of offshoot kind of tunnel. But that is going to lead down. Dungeons should be almost maze-like in their design. Because effectively that's what you're doing. You're designing a maze. It's going to be a maze with puzzles. So this just gets all oop just gets all that and now we're gonna do something it's gonna be awesome here we go now we have a little bottleneck for the player to go through and you're probably thinking to yourself bender waffles you told us to never force the player to go through a one tile wide space that's true in the overworld, in the in like towns, in forests, and things of that nature. The reason that I tell you not to do that is because you don't want your player to feel claustrophobic. When you're in a dungeon, most of the time you want your player to feel claustrophobic because they're in, in tight places. They are not safe, so they need to not feel safe. And making them feel claustrophobic is a really good way to do that. So, and also this bottleneck serves us another purpose in that. We're going to be able to use this to introduce the idea of keys and locked doors. Because we're forcing them through a bottleneck, what we're going to do in next episode, when we cover switches and variables and all that sort of fun advanced coding stuff that we're going to be using for uh, creating the puzzles in our dungeons, we'll be able to put a door in there that will not be opened until we get a key. That key is going to be in a treasure chest up over here. Again, this is the first dungeon that our player is going to be sort of interacting with. So it's going to be very simple to make sure that our player learns the rules of the world and how things work. You could very easily create a dungeon that's super complicated and it's like this, you gotta get this key to unlock this door that leads to this switch and you gotta push this statue onto it to like open up this door that leads to this other key and uh, it just, it gets, you could be overly complicated, but your player is gonna get lost super fast, especially if they aren't, if they aren't necessarily like a real hardcore gamer. Like imagine if you were making this game for your mom. You want your mom to understand the way that the game works before you start throwing like all of these challenges out at you. Unless your mom is a gamer, which case awesome. My mom's a baker. So yeah. Um anyways, we're just going to make things simple for the sake of the tutorial and for the sake of the fact that this is the early early dungeon. So again, guys, make sure you're adding in those shadows. It makes your piece feel like it's three-dimensional. See that right there? That looks a lot better. One thing, though, is that right now this dungeon looking super plain. So let's decorate it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and let's slap some cracks in the wall, shall we? That'll uh, make it seem kind of run down. One thing to think about when you're designing dungeons, when you're designing any maps, really, when it comes to any of them, is that you want to think about randomness. And what I mean by that is you're not going to see symmetry in everything. You'll see symmetry in things that are man-made, in like pieces of architecture um, and things of that nature, you will not see symmetry necessary. You won't see it in nature like at all. So just get that out of your head. Um, and having a bit of randomness to your world just makes it feel real. So when you're placing stuff down, don't be like mirroring everything. Like you should be having, as I said, 
that bit of randomness. So I'm going to be doing... No, that's a bad place for that. Right there. So like this, for instance. We've got these four columns, and they, they look nice. What if I take one out, and I put sort of like a cracked, broken column? Now, I, I'm tempted to make this column broken, but I'm not going to. No. I'm just going to have the one broken column, and there's going to be like some rocks next to it. And we're gonna we're gonna throw down some more rocks because rocks. Rocks are cool. So let's go ahead and let's add some more columns throughout here. Let's have this one be no, let's have this one be broken. This one is fine. And the treasure chest is gonna be sitting right in there, so let's make sure that we don't block it off. Let's throw down some rocks. Maybe let's put a skeleton near the chest that's gonna make people think like hmm maybe there's something going on in that chest and indeed they'll be right we're gonna put some cracked pottery because this is like a temple so there's like there was wine and stuff like that here and also speaking of the fact that it's a temple we're gonna put down a fancy smancy uh dragon like floor piece although with this being with everything being uneven maybe that's not a good idea so let's think about just sort of when you're making dungeons experiment like it's it's all experimentation we're gonna put stairs here we're gonna make some of the stairs broken maybe not the, the very middle ones <laughs> Oop, we got that symmetry going on again. Don't do that. And also, you can... For every, like, floor tile in a dungeon, for the most part, there's a broken up floor tile. So you can make stuff just look like it's a little... raggedy. A little messed up. And we're gonna get to this area in a little bit. Make sure you add in any shadows if you screwed that up. So yeah, just kind of play with it, and you'll get a pretty good look, for the most part. Like, again, be, be a bit random. Randomness is your friend. You like randomness. You invite them over for, you know, sleepovers. Maybe you cuddle. I don't know. I don't judge. So, now we've got, like all this sort of pottery and we've got dead people and all of that and it just it sort of, it looks it looks like someplace that was like an actual thing to a certain degree and we you can put other stuff like we got bigger columns and you know you got wrecked beds and wrecked like curtains and wrecked tapestries in fact let's put some of those just give it some color. Make sure you save. Save often. And so now we're going to have this gate here. It's going to be through. Get a key here to open the gate. And then we're going to have some stairs up. Or maybe we'll do stairs down. Yeah. Let's do stairs down. So we're going to put those stairs there. And that's how we're going to get to the next floor. And the next floor is going to be done using the dungeon generator. So make sure you save and go right click new and just make a map of the size that you're going to want your map to be 50 50 choose the tile set make sure it's dungeon this is all the same as going the other way so snow temple basement one b1 it's only gonna be one basement so now we've got this big empty space and it's like you're like yeah that's that's fine we could just we could make a map just like we did this one, which by the way, one good idea if you're making a map like this and you gave yourself a ton of extra space and um, you find that you don't need it, is move your thing into the furthest upper corner, clear everything else. This is just kind of for cleanliness sake, you don't necessarily have to do this. And then figure out a tile pretty far away but still kind of closer. So go down here. We got 4028. Right click, edit, change the width and the height 
so that you're not using a ton of space. It's about cleanliness, guys. So now that we got that, go to Snow Temple here. So now we got this big empty, just void. There's nothing in it. We're going to change that. Right click and go down here to generate dungeon. Now you're going to get a whole bunch of different like options here for the way that you want to sort of do things. Uh, MV and VXAs, I believe, have different have different like options. Uh, so just sort of look for those as you're going through. But uh, what you do is you go through and you choose your type. So room or maze, we're going to go with rooms because this is man-made, so it needs to look sort of man-made. Um, and then, actually, I'm not sure what adds margins around the dungeons. We want that. We want wide passages because we would want people to not feel... Um, claustrophobic so choose your tiles okay it's already chosen for us and then click okay like magic we have uh, some pre-generated spaces now as I pointed out as I said it has all of the walls you could easily just delete the walls that you don't need and it would be fine you would be fine stylistically and wouldn't really take you that long but we're gonna leave this just because we're gonna be working within this space so now we have this generated dungeon and it looks nice and honestly there's not a lot that I feel like I need to do to clean this up um, I'm going to take this one and I'm gonna move it down just to sort of close that up a little bit and make it look a little bit more uniform and I'm gonna do the same thing here because I don't want the passageway to be quite that big. So I'll just close that up. And this is sort of weird. Whatever's happening here. So I'm just going to shift that over. So you can go through and you can mess with it more to give it more. Um, more interesting looks more structure if you really want to uh right now i'm just going to go through and one thing i'm going to do actually now that i think about it is i'm going to break this room up because this room is huge it's flipping huge so i'm just going to kind of break that up a wee bit maybe we'll you know make them have to go through that passage again huh yeah because reasons so now they'll come in and I'm gonna move this one down so that it's not a one by one and there you go be thinking about game flow be thinking about the flow of the map how are your players going to be perceiving where they need to go like maybe this room's a little too big so I'm going to bring it down to here because we don't need a room that big right now and I'm going to do the same over here. Oops. Let's just take this and move it in. Because we don't need a room that big. You know, tweak it. Mess with it. Make it fit the way that you want it to fit. Because it's your game. Like, you should get what you want out of your game. I mean, it makes sense, right? So... Yeah, just tweak it, play with it, you'll get it sorted out. Now let's make sure that we have our staircase up to where we need to go. Bam! Staircase achieved. And now we're going to put columns in this room because columns are cool. I've said this before, I'll say it again. The columns are going to be kind of offset in this room because we've got the staircase there, which is fine. We're going to break one of the columns, and this time it's going to be this column. Put our big rocks. Put some little rocks. We're going to put more little rocks. Yeah, rocks. Rocks are also cool. Not nearly as cool as, uh, uh, you know, columns, but still pretty cool. So now just go through and kind of same stuff, just sort of break up the walls. 
Um, make it feel lived in, you know. Don't overuse one thing versus the other. I may have done that a little bit there, but that's okay. Mistakes can be made. You're going to experiment and you'll learn from it. That's all this is. And we're actually going to put one of these in here. Why? Because this is this is what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get our player to get to that. And we're going to put... It's going to be guarded by two dragons. And columns. Ah, uh, yeah. Columns. Because columns are cool. Um... So this would be the room where, like, there'd be a boss fight. Stuff would happen. Let's have a rug. Can we... Are there rugs in this tile set? There is. Let's have... A rug. So, like, you gotta walk up that rug. And then you're gonna... You're gonna face... Face your darkest nightmare in here. I don't know what it is. It ain't gonna be nice. I know that. We're going to cover that in a slightly later episode, so. Uh, check back soon. I seriously love columns. I like columns. Anyways, we're going to break some of these columns because they're just too too clean. Too nice looking. And again, be random in your placements. Maybe this one too. Oops. I got rid of my little wall hole. I'm sure this is riveting stuff. Dungeons are kind of... There's not really a lot to it as far as like the explanation of making them is concerned. You just kind of play around with it and make something that looks cool. Yeah. So. Boop. We're going to have some pots in this hallway. Because whatever, like, Religious order occupied this building. They are a huge fan of pottery. Um, just fair. I mean, pottery is uh, pottery is pretty awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, what the hell happened there? So yeah, I don't have a lot to say about this one, guys. It's it's fairly straightforward it's just yeah at least during the map creation process there's not really a lot to go over I'm just kind of dragging this out because I didn't want to leave you guys with a half completed dungeon So, yay. It's not the best looking. I've certainly done a lot better. Um, so make sure that you add in your transfer events. We've gone over this in a previous episode. How to do your transfers. Um, gonna do this now. When you're in dungeons, you do have to worry about like things like direction. Um, so you're going upstairs like this. So your player... You want them to feel like they're going up the stairs this way. But if they come at it this way, then when they come on the other on the other map, they're going to be facing up. So force them to be facing right. So now when they step on that, they will come out. And we're going to have them come out here. And they will be um, facing right. Which occurs to me that I did not send them to a place. Oh, I did. Okay. So... Yeah, they will be facing 
this way. And make sure that you do the opposite on this one. We're going to be facing them left. It's going to be like staring at a column. And now make sure that you do the uh, transfers so that your people can leave your map. I know that we haven't really covered that yet because we haven't done transferring from the map. But I mean, it's it's not hard. You guys can do transfer events, so you can do this. And there you go. We've successfully made a pretty short, pretty simple but still nonetheless functional dungeon. And with that, we now have two different methods for creating dungeons. Feel free to tweet your dungeon designs at me, at BenderWaffles. I would love to see what you guys make. In the next episode, we will be further developing our dungeons by creating puzzles using basic variables. You can click on this button here to go to that video. If it isn't up yet though, that button will instead take you to my channel where you can subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment down below, or consider supporting me directly via Patreon. A link for that is in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe guys, and I will see you next time when I find out the hard way that T-Rexes can in fact see movement.